Fallout 76 has a lot of hidden content that might escape even the most dedicated players. In this video, I am bringing you another batch of tips, tricks and secrets that you probably didn't know about until now. Let's do this! Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. I have been gathering some of the most interesting secrets, tips and tricks in the past weeks and I came up with 23 points that might come as a surprise to you. This video will be quite long, so let's cut the intro short. Anyhow, if you enjoy this type of content, feel free to check my previous tips and tricks video with lots of useful and stunning facts. Now, whether you are a new or veteran player, I am confident you will get to learn something new here. So sit back and discover some new exciting things about Fallout 76. Let's start with a fact that you have maybe seen but you probably didn't realize what it meant. Did you know that the Mothman often spawns at the cult of the Mothman outposts? That's right! I have found over a dozen of them at cultist locations ever since the Wastelanders came live and it's not like I am visiting their camps that often. The curious point here is that the Mothman can spawn as a friendly creature or as a hostile one. Either way, when you first visit a cult location with a spawn Mothman, you will find the cultist members praising the creature just like a true cult would do. It's a realistic point right there. Now, you can't damage or kill a friendly Mothman and sometimes hostile ones bug out. Still, I have killed a few hostile Mothman in the past and this is a quick way to find a Mothman if you are really looking for one for whatever reason. Something I have recently seen on Reddit is about how scarecrows can be really useful items for defending camps and workshops. I legit had no idea this camp item had any functional use, but guess what? It actually does. When you get attacked, enemies are most likely going to attack the scarecrows first, they kinda lure enemies and work as bait for some reason. I know it sounds strange, but I decided to test this point and as you can see, enemies do tend to go for the scarecrows even when there are other items they could go for instead. I also made the test with turrets and enemies always landed the first hit on my scarecrows placed in front of the turrets. Of course, enemies will quickly switch targets since the turrets are firing at them but still, this shows how Scarecrows can be a very helpful item when it comes to defense. This point is a fantastic trick to farm extra radiated fluids and glowing mass. You need a syringer with the Bloatfly mod installed and you need to head inside a nuked area as well. These are the requirements for this trick. Then all you have to do is hit enemies with the syringer first, you have to always hit them first, and then kill them with whatever weapon you prefer. With each kill, there is a chance for a bloodfly to spawn, however, since you are inside a nuked area, the bloodfly will always spawn as a glowing bloodfly. This means you can spawn more enemies yourself and increase your chances to find the irradiated items you need. Great trick, no? It does take some practice to get used to the strategy and swapping weapons all the time, but A, it works like a charm and it can help you save a lot of time. You surely know about the Nuka-Cola Cranberry, a new flavor introduced with the Wastelanders DLC. It gives you 2% experience gain for one hour, but what most people don't seem to know or remember is that we have a perk in Endurance called Cola Nut that can triple the effects of Nuka-Cola drinks. 
So you can get 6% experience gain with the cranberry flavor by using this perk. Pretty awesome if you stuck it with a well-rested buff and the inspirational perk, for example. Too bad it does not stack with other foods and drinks that boost experience gain as well, such as the cranberry relish and cobbler. Only the effect from the latest consumed item seems to prevail in this case when it comes to experience gain. The Wendigo Colossus is a rare boss to find right now. There is around 6% chance to spawn it through conflict random encounter events, if you nuke them, of course. Now, that's a lot of work, especially if you look at the rewards, which are really low. You get a random legendary item, screws, and well, you can get up to 500 caps per kill. Data mine info shows that you have a 20% chance to loot 500 caps from the Colossus, but the most common caps drop seems to be only 150. Well, at least we will be able to find this creature more often in the upcoming patches. So keep your fingers crossed that the 20% chance for 500 caps won't simply go away. Now, this is like a Fallout 76 hack, pretty much a secret that every player should know and use because it makes our life so much easier. I'm not sure how it works for consoles, but for PC, you can click on certain keys to scroll up or down much faster. This includes your inventory, your stash, and your scrap box as well. Anyway, there are three speed modes, the first with shift, the second with control, and the third with both keys. I am usually using the control key because I find it convenient, and the difference is abysmal. You can scroll down through dozens of normal scrolls scrolls within a few seconds. Before, I would take around half a minute to go over my entire apparel tab, and now I can go through it in just a few seconds. It's crazy, so enjoy this new piece of information and I hope you can now navigate much faster. One of the display options for Fallout 76 is the field of view, which can make your camera really, really wide, pretty much like the maxed field option in the photo mode by the same name. Now, this option might sound useless to you, and in adventure, I do agree, it doesn't make much sense. It hurts your eyes, the visuals are crappy, out of proportion, and so on. But if you move to Nuclear Winter, the field of view can become really useful, like an ally, especially if you max it out. It's like going around in photo mode, except you're not. I know most of you love to hide in bushes and avoid fighting, so this could be your extra layer of protection since you can see much more and detect enemies much faster this way. Yes, including from inside bushes as you can see. The Ammunition Machine is a new item that was added to the game with the Wastelanders DLC. You can get it by maxing your reputation with the Raiders faction and then purchasing the plan from the faction vendor with some gold bullion. But what you probably don't know yet is that this machine has three different production modes. The machine doesn't need resources, which is kind of surprising, and it produces ammo every one minute and a half, give or take. However, depending on the ammo type you choose, the production can be different. This machine can generate one, two, or five bullets per craft. For example, shotgun shells and gamma rounds get one ammo per craft, 45 and 44 get two bullets per craft, and ammo like 5, 5, 6, and 10 millimeters get five bullets per craft. At first, I thought there were only two production types, but figures there are actually three. You are always learning while playing this game. Ally characters are great to have around in your camp, they even help you defend against enemies. Well, not every enemy though. I have recently discovered they don't give a damn about enemy players. So if you get attacked or decide to engage in PvP at your camp, don't count with your ally for anything, not even as a meat shield since, yeah, as you can see, they don't react. You can even get killed or your camp can get destroyed 
and it's like another sunny day in the wasteland for them. Moreover, ally characters tend to get buggy when you are fighting other players at your camp. Another curious fact about allies is their god mode abilities towards other players. Now, they can get down by normal NPCs, but when it comes to players, they are invisible. Enemy players cannot deal any damage to ally companions or, well, to their items as well. In fact, there doesn't seem to be an HP or durability bar for ally items. You can check the durability of basically any other camp item less ally ally items. I guess Bethesda created this exception to the rules in order to avoid further griefing from malicious players. Still, it's something you probably weren't aware of until this point. I have one more secret about allies and this one is about their ability to pick up, equip and use ranged weapons if you drop a weapon and the respective ammo close to them, and I do mean very very close. I have done a series of tests and it's not so easy to see this in action. First, your ally must be engaged in combat and then you must drop the items right at their feet, while surviving the enemy attacks too. Anyway, this is a really nice detail and it can make your allies look even more customized. However, they do not keep any weapons, so every time you log out, change servers or disconnect, they will lose the weapon they picked up earlier. On the other hand, we can already dress them up, so maybe cosmetic weapons with no stats will be possible in the near future. Who knows? If you have followed the settlers' questline, you surely ended up in this new military bunker. But what you probably didn't notice is the board blueprints. There are several in the walls, including fertilizer formulas for different seasons with all the precise calculations and all the numbers. So everything in great detail. You can also find a detailed blueprint for a feeder pump with all the parts and so on, which I don't think it exists in game yet, so this could be an easter egg indicating we will get a feeder pump as a camp item in the future. I find it strange Bethesda would randomly add such knowledge there, it has to mean something. What do you guys think it means though? The fertilizer turbo machine is a very creative item, let me tell you that much. I got it a few days ago and I was really surprised when I realized it creates fertilizer bombs, literally. Instead of making real fertilizer, the junk item, it creates some sort of grenades, you can find it in your weapons tab. What does it do though? Well, it kind of refreshes the cooldown of your veggies. If you harvest them and then throw one of these turbo green bombs, the veggies will instantly respawn and you can harvest them once again. Just make sure to aim right at the center of your garden. These turbo ferret balls are pretty handy to quickly craft food, drinks and even for completing challenges. Well, 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 at the Pleasant Valley Ski Resort you can find a new NPC called Bell Hop, and you can exchange tickets for a chance to get some rare goodies. Tickets are pretty rare and they drop from Scorched and Ghouls in case you were wondering where to get them. Anyway, some of the rare drops include two fancy weapons with a golden color, a revolver and a shotgun. You can also roll rare outfits, such as the western ones. Rare drops is what everybody wants, however, he often gives you common items, such as watches, red dresses and ski outfits. So you gotta keep trying, until you get lucky. Did you know you can modify the main type of your weapon? It only works with a few weapon types, but it's still a curious fact that not a lot of people seem to know. For example, you can turn a Tesla rifle into a Tesla shotgun, and it will behave as a shotgun, for real, with splash damage, higher heat radius and a lower heat range. You can also turn automatic rifles into short or assault ones, too bad the perks don't follow this sort of weapon modification, perks will not boost fake guns. Yes, I did test it too. Oh well, it was worth a try at least. 
Static vendors seem to sell only their own pool of items, but when it comes to traveling merchants, things work a bit differently. I have recently found out that they can sell you more than their own items. They can also sell items that were previously sold to them by other players. That's why you can often find strange rare items in their pool these days, such as legendary items, mods, and even fashna masks. At first, I thought their pool was just amazing and very, very extensive, but it's not exactly the case. At least now you know you should always check what a traveling merchant has for sale. You never know what you will find there. Blood Eagle camps are excellent locations for farming different things including bubble heads. Yes, you heard me right. Almost every Blood Eagle outpost has one or even two bubble head spawns. It's just not a lot of people know about this fact yet. That's why I decided to share. I have recently visited every Blood Eagle camp in the game and I was amazed. I found the items up in almost every server I checked. It's just the bubble heads are kind of hidden, which can confuse people when they hear about the spawn. Might be worth making a guide out of this topic. Hmm, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Another thing about Blood Eagle camps is that they often spawn legendary enemies as well. While looking for the bubble heads and confirming that they indeed got a lot of spawns in their camps, I found so many legendaries. I was even over encumbered at some point and had to drop legendary items. Usually, you can expect one legendary mob to show up or spawn per three camp visits, but it also depends a lot on the server. In one of my runs, I found four legendary bosses in five of the camps I visited, all in the same server. All in all, Blood Eagle camps are great locations to farm, and that's it. Fallout 76 has a lot of rare and collection items, and a few new ones were added to the game with the Wastelanders DLC, such as the Accordion. You have maybe missed it during the new questline, just like I did, because it only takes one player to loot it for you to miss it. You can find the first one at a ransacked bunker, right at the main room's entrance on top of a wooden furniture under the lighthouse painting. The second location is at the overseer's home on her office room on the first floor, right on top of her desk. Sadly, this item is massive and you cannot add it to your display cases. I wish we could play it at least, it would be a nice touch to the country music we have in-game. Another super rare item is this new named hairbrush inside of Vault 79. If you have completed the Wastelanders main questline, then it will be difficult for you to get it since the vault is now closed. But here's the location in case you have an alt or you're not done with the quest yet. You can find the Hoof Warbler hairbrush at the secret agency headquarters in the sleeping room inside the white locker. Now, this is a true collector's item because you need specific conditions to get it, plus it looks exactly the same as the fancy hairbrush. It just it scraps for more materials and has a different name and that's it. So yeah, it's only worth getting it if you collect items, I suppose. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Secret Agency Armor Set, which is really powerful and it boosts your defense by a lot, well, at least compared to all the other armor types. But, for example, the Torso Piece has a shared mod slot for the Jetpack and the Deep Pocket mod, so you are forced to choose one or the other, you can never get both. Can have everything in life, huh? Now, the limbs have a different problem. For instance, they do not offer the deep pocket mod, but they can be heavily fortified. Overall, this armor has a lot more durability compared to other types, which means you need to do a less repairing over time. Too bad it takes dozens and dozens of crafts to get the legendary effects you really want. 
All right, now this is a curious effect I found out some days ago. Bottle cap mines have been removed from the game, but some players still got some left. The funny thing here is that whenever you shoot one of these mines, they will explode and then they keep spinning and moving around for all eternity. It doesn't stop, ever. I'm not sure if this is a bug or, well, if it's intentional, but we tried several mines and they all spin the same way. So I guess it is intended after all. I must admit, it is a funny thing to watch even if it's a bug. Surely something you don't see every day. <laughs> Lastly, I have another fact that won't come as a surprise to you. Enemies can spawn stuck or get stuck in all sorts of Things. I had seen stuck mobs inside the map, like half body, but between walls and windows, it was a first time, really. <laughs> this dog eventually unstuck himself, but he stood there for a long while. I also found this gulper stuck on top of the tree. I hit him several times, but he never came out of there. Cozy place, I get it. He was so bugged that he did not take any damage, as you can see. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Fallout 76. I feel like there's always something new to discover and learn with this game. It's just so comprehensive despite what a lot of people say about it. So this was another video for the tips and tricks series, I hope you enjoyed it. And most importantly, I hope you learned something new here. Let me know which point surprised you the most in the comments below. I am Marta Branku, thank you so much for watching and for all your support. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you didn't yet and well you can support me even further if you want the links are always below the video that's everything for this one i will see you all very very soon until then take care adios bye bye